it's totally been masked up? It's got this sweet little... <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to WNL, which stands for Wednesday Night Live because it's Wednesday and it's night and we're live. <laughs> kind of easy on that one. My name's Dave. If you don't know me, my name's Dave. I'm so glad everyone's here. Why don't we start once again? I don't think we prayed downstairs before Mexican wall ball. So why don't we pray and then we'll let the Lord take over. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for how much you love us. Uh, thank you for the gift that you have given us through your son and his death and resurrection. And God, what a beautiful message to share. So help us follow your example and live sharing. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, that's what we're talking about. We're in the middle of a series that we call the BB Challenge. And it all comes because I had a fish just like these fish right here. I got them about that size and BB went nutso cuckoo on me. And BB actually jumped out of the tank several times. And when a fish is out of water, how good is a fish? No, a fish out of water is not good. You know, the same thing with us. When we have stepped out in disobedience from God and stepped away from a person far from God is just like a fish out of water. I have been there. So has everybody else in the universe, except for God himself. We've all stepped out in disobedience and we've all become fish out of water. And what we're talking about is how then do we get back in the tank? How can we actually be saved from this horrible thing called sin and disobedience and all that it entails? And there actually is hope. And so that's what we're talking about biblically. And the world needs to know it. And so the BB challenges is not just to know that truth, but then to share it. So every time we've gotten together, we have been talking about two distinct things. What we share and then how we share it. <clears throat> I am Pastor David Wayne Griffin, and I'd like to share with you all a bit of truth. You, young people, have disobeyed our sinners, and will they burn far from God? Now, that's what we like to call a little bit of preaching. Does that go over well in society these days? I would like to say probably not. As you also notice, that it isn't the best style or what I use. I'm not very good at that. But here's the whole idea about it, guys, is, is how do we, like Jesus, with the friends we already have, share this wonderful news of Jesus? So what we're going to share and then how we're going to share it because it matters. Does that sound all right? Does it sound good? In order to start it off, to sort of introduce everything, I would like our, uh, all of our volunteer leaders to please stand up. Would you please stand up? Look around, and I just want to know, does anybody know who she is right there? Can we shout out a name for me? Emily. Yeah, very good. That's a very good. Now we got some brand new ones. So it might be tough. Anybody know her name? She's name. Yes, very good. How about in the back over there? Is another new one right here? Her? Right, we're going good. Sarah, in the back, back over there, who only comes to be in the thumbnail. Nicole, very good. Nicole, next Nicole over here, this large white dude. Sorry. Aiden, very good. Now, like this young lady, she's kind of new. There's only her second or third time here. What, anybody remember? No? Jackie, very good. Up in the back, he is truly standing up. Anybody know his name? And then the patriarch of, all, of, of us all over here on the far side of here, does anybody know his name? Carl. Carl. So now what this is, this is a test to see how well you know your leaders. I am involved in part of it. My name is Dave. If you don't know it, it is called Kahoot. So do me a favor and hop on over to the classic. And then we'll get ready to join. Pull out your phones. That is the number 619-4636. So you go to Kahoot, you say you want to play, and you enter that pin. It is 619-4636. We got Genius Act. We got, oh my goodness, I started trying to read, and I can't read that fast. I can't read that fast. You're getting in there. Very good. Prairie Dog, Cute Bobcat, Prairie Wallaby, uh, Arctic Boa, Jolly Jaguar, Polite Elk, Happy Wolf, Big Fat Fart. It's not up there, but I felt like saying fart. 
All right, so here we go. Everybody ready? You guys ready for this one? Did you guys get a chance in there? That number is 619-4636. That's 619-4636. Call, and you can be a part of this game too. Here we go, everybody. Question number one is... HSM leader facts. Who has eaten donkey? Write it down right there. Is that Lauren, Dave, Emily, or Matt? Who has eaten donkey? Who has eaten donkey? Guess right up. We got 32 answers. Look at that right there. It is not Dave. Matt, nice job on the far side up there. Matt has eaten donkeys, not Dave. Next question. Next question. There we go. Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Quiz is showing up right here. Who has won honor roll and had a 4.2 grade average all four years in high school? Is that Lauren, Dave, Carl, or Aiden? Write it down. 4.2 grade average. Who is it? Hi, Ella. How you doing? Glad you're here. Who is it? Get your answers down. 4.2 grade. That's above an A. That's like to a whole nother level. Boom! Thank you. Thank you. Actually was. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you. Who guessed that that was me? Who reached out there and guessed that? It was me. Thank you. Uh-huh. I act dumb, but I ain't dumb. Next question. Let's see who gets up there. Nice. Diligent dove. Way to go. Here we go for the next one. True or false? Emily has a twin. Is that true or is that false? You got a 50% chance. Emily has a twin. Check it out. 30 answers. Let's see what's going. We got nine, eight. Guess it up. Does she, does she have a twin? Emily, do you have a twin? Hey, it is true. She has a twin. Oh, let's see what that results are up there. Who's up on top on that one now? The mighty crab. Nice. Next question. What is this? Who loves to eat carrots? Who loves to eat carrots? Is that Aiden, Nicole, Carl, or Lauren? Loves to eat carrots. I'm not there because I don't like carrots. Guess it up. See who you think it is. Who loves to eat carrots? You can tell by their eyesight. Carl. Carl, the carrot eater. Nice. Carl is a carrot eater. Next question. Let's see who's up on top still. The agile hamster is up there. Next. True, false. Aiden is a descendant of the writer of America the Beautiful. Aiden is the descendant of a writer of America the Beautiful. Is that true or is that false? You can vote at home too. Get on here. Check it out. See if you can do it. Let's see what we got. And it is false. Aiden, who are you? A descendant of somebody? Uh, the writer of the Star Spangled Banner. Close in song, but that's pretty awesome. Aiden goes all back to his Grammy. was like, the Star Spangled Banner, I'm going to write it. Next question. Knowing Kitty. Nice job. We've had a new person. Who has an extra set of tear ducts? An extra, is that Dave? Is that Lauren? Is that Nicole? Or is that Matt? Lauren is not here, but y'all know. Who's got an extra set of tear ducts? Quack, quack. Duck. An extra one. Who is it? It's Lauren. I think you can actually see it when you actually look in her eyes that she's got a little extra. So when she cries, get out of the way because it's a tsunami. It's a tsunami. All right, go next. Oh, very qualified. Very good. True, false. Carl has been in two musicals. Has Carl been in two musicals? One is the Prancing Fairy and the other one is the Incredible Hulk the musical. Those are the two completely different, but why was he good? Is it true, Carl? Were you in two musicals, Carl? Yes! What two musical, Carl? Did you guys know that Carl is a very, very accomplished fiddler? And sometimes you can catch him on the roof. All right. Perry Wallaby, way up there in the lead. Nice job, Nick! 
All right, quiz, eight of 13. Who has been to 14 countries? Is that Lauren? Is that Nicole? Is that Carl? Is that Dave? 14 countries. 14 países. ¿Quién puede ser? Who's been to 14 different countries? Who's been there? We've all voted. It is not Dave. It's Nicole. You look like Nicole and you feel like world traveler. Pretty awesome. Nice job, Nicole. Way to go. Perry Wallby still up there on top. Who can play six different instruments? Is that Emily, Lauren, Matt, or Aiden? Six different. Oh, there's the side music. Six different instruments. Vote it up. Take a guess. Emily, Lauren, Matt, Aiden. Three, two, one. Lauren. Not only does she have two ducks in her eyes, those ducks can play music, which is pretty awesome. All right, next one up. Prairie Wallaby still up there on top. Hanging on. Who is that, by the way? Oh, Aiden in the back. Emily went to a rock concert with her mailman. That's shady. That's shady. Not only does she have a twin, is she hitting up the mailman? Is she like, what's up, mailman? You want to go concert? Hey, mailman, you want to go concert, mailman? Taylor Swift concert, mailman? Hey. Or was it the mailman? Was he like, hey, young lady, do you want to see a concert? It's true. Who was your mailman? Oh, mail carrier. Still true. That male person. She went to concert with him. Prairie Wallbach. Nice job. Way up there on top. This is it. Here we go. Next, 11 of 13. Who had their first Coca-Cola this year? And I think it was actually in this room. Very first Coca-Cola this year. Was that Aiden? Was it Matt? Was it Lauren or Emily? And that Coca-Cola was imported straight from Mexico. So it was a good Coca-Cola. Who was it? Who knows their people best? Guess it up. Aiden, Lauren, Matt. Yes, it was Matt. First Coca-Cola. Coming out of the Coca-Cola closet. What? Much better. All right. Did you... Prairie Wallaby, way up there. Who's Mighty Crab? Catch up there. Come on now, Mighty Crab. Catch up there, Mighty Crab. Here we go. Here we go. Quiz. Who had their finger run over by a vacuum? Who had their middle finger run over by a vacuum? Not just any finger. Is that Dave? Is that Carl? Is that Nicole or Aiden? Their middle finger run over by a vacuum. I don't understand how that happens. Were they flicking off the vacuum? Were they angry with the vacuum? Did the vacuum suck too much? And like, I can't believe. Aiden, what happened, Aiden? On two years old, I was playing on the floor, my mom ran over my finger. You want to see later? I'm asking you to still have the truck. You can see it. Nice. You should stay away from vacuums and fences. Nice, Aiden. Well done. Aiden with the crooked finger. Money crib. Nice. All right, last one here. Last one. This is it. This is for the all the marbles. 13 of 15. 13. Nicole's favorite movie series is Twilight. Stare into our eyes, try to figure it out. World Traveler. Does the World Traveler is it Twilight or is it Nacho Libre series? Where is Nacho Libre 2? It should be out there somewhere. It's the best movie ever. Let's take a look at it. And it is false. Nicole, what's your favorite movie series? Lord of the Freaking rings. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like it. I like it. All right. Let's check out our champions. Seven out of 13. Who's the, who's the glowing yak? Nicely done. Who is the prairie wallaby? And then up there top is Mighty Crab with the win on the far side. Way to go. Round of applause. Excellent. Turn all that stuff down. Now, you might be going, why did we spend so much time doing that? Here's the whole idea. Questions, true, honest, heartfelt questions can take a relationship to a whole nother level. Just to talk a little bit about this, you guys, and this is what's cool about it is, is I want you to know that when I step into a conversation, what usually is going on in my mind is this person has to hear this story because it is so awesome. This person has to hear what I have to tell them because it is so important. Or this person better let me take the, tell this joke because it's just so darn funny. 
And so when I get into a conversation, my wife says, Dave, you talk too much. I don't know if you've ever had a conversation with me when I'm uh, uh, not thinking about others and I get on a roll and just go story after story after story. Anybody ever been around where I just start bleeding words out of my face in different storytelling? Everybody has a good time and stuff, but the truth is, who's the center of attention in that conversation then? Me. And if we are sitting there saying, hey, how do we want to share God's precious news is, there's a couple things that we should do before, before sharing God's precious news. First, remember we talked about this, and it's our wonderful fish in a bag. It's a fish. This represents that, hey, we are all fish out of water without Jesus. We're all sinful. But some people around me don't know Jesus and need them. They're struggling in life. And so I am going to PPP. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to pick that fish out of water and I'm going to pray that God would bring the truth into the life. God bring their truth. Once I start doing that, my next thing is, is then to actually reach out after I'm praying for them. This is a friendship bracelet with friendship. I'm not just going to go up and preach to them. We're going to actually go up and try to actually extend friendship, invite them to do something, eat together, ride big wheels together, play video games together, crochet cloth frogs together, I couldn't think of anything bad. I couldn't think. Uh, play soccer together, hang out, have some coffee, talk. I mean, there's all these, do homework together. I don't know, go skiing, who knows? All of these things that we say we're going to extend our friendship. But what we want to do now is take it to a whole nother level. I have a Bible story that I'd love you guys all to look at and watch Jesus actually do this. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to open up to Luke you reach over, you grab the book of Luke, Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, we're going to be looking at verses 17. And so I just wanted to uh, read this with you, and I think it's really interesting. So Luke chapter 5, verse 17, it's a story about Jesus. And it gives you a little background in 17. One day, Jesus was teaching. And Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. So Jesus is doing some pretty sick healing. So it's, it's pretty sick being there. I'm just like that word. So men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, They went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. So these guys took apart the roof and dropped this guy down with a rope down into Jesus. Now, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The guy's paralyzed and he immediately goes to saying, hey, friend, your sins are forgiven. Well, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, they're thinking in their brains, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. Immediately, he stood up in front of them, took what had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed, gave praise to God, and they were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Now, here's what I think is really interesting. We could analyze exactly what Jesus said and all that went on there, but Jesus did, he has two people in front of him. He has this dude that's come out of the ceiling, And then he has all of the teachers. And Jesus knows exactly what the biggest need of each one of those people are before he actually begins to talk to them. I mean, Jesus is God. And so this paralyzed man comes down and he immediately answers this man's most important need. And what was it? This dude was a sinful dude. This dude did not have a relationship with God. He was a fish out of water. And Jesus says right there, not, hey, repent. Hey, dude, 
your sins are forgiven, which is pretty awesome. He meets him right where he needs to be met. Then he also did this because this is exactly what the Pharisees and the teachers need to see. They start going, what is this dude saying? Does this guy think he's God? And how does he answer? I am God. He actually answers with some really cool questions. Gets them to think. And he says, uh, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, to, to, to forgive sin or to get up and walk? And then he does it, he proves it. Now, why am I doing at this? This is what I'm saying is, is while Jesus is in front of these people, the Pharisees, fish out of water. The guy coming down, fish out of the water. Before acting, he knew what they needed. He made their needs the center of attention. It wasn't about what he wanted to do. This guy needs forgiveness, and these guys need an example of who I am. It's about them. There's a ton of different things Jesus could have done to draw attention to himself, but he actually said, I'm going to make this guy and these guys the actual center of attention by asking questions and looking at it. And so as I sat there and looked at this, I realized a lot of times that when I am speaking to somebody, I so much want to have my voice heard that I don't have time to actually get to know the person that I'm trying to share Jesus with. And so I would say, and this is the way I'm going to say it, is we need to learn to ask questions. Because before we're going to share his story, we should learn their story. They should be important to us, to us, that before we share his story, we should love them enough to actually hear their story. And I'm not like Jesus. I can't just have some guy lower down in front of me and know exactly what they need. The way that I have figured out how to do that in my life is by actually in my friendship to ask questions to learn about that person. To make them the center of attention. I don't know if you've ever sat down and had a discussion with somebody who truly listens to get to know you. Have you ever been with somebody that is actually interested in who you are? It's hard to shut up. There's something that just makes you feel, especially if you're a storyteller, makes you feel unbelievable important. And they just, oh, well, now why did you do that? And tell me more about that. And I just look at that and say, you know what? I think that's what we need to do in order to learn to truly care for the people that are fish out of water is to say, am I willing to actually listen where they're coming from? So here's the little, the new gift. The new gift is this right here. It's a tiny luggage tag. Everybody pull out your tiny luggage tag. Tiny, cute, little colored lug luggage tag. Normally, what goes on a luggage tag is your personal information. Because this thing is mine. This bag is mine. This suitcase is mine. And so this is what you want to put on it is my personal information. I want to totally switch this around in context and say, you know what? Wouldn't it be cool that if here, instead of saying mine, 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 in the conversation that we're having with our friends, we sit there and say, how could I make them the center of my attention? How could I, like Jesus, actually learn what's most important to them? Ask those questions. Ask those deep probing questions like, so who, who are you and what do you like to do? What, what's your family life like? What, what brings you joy? When you have a day off, what would you do with it? Man, if somebody gave you a million dollars, how would you spend it? What really brings you down? What really brings you up? What do you think you're going to be when you grow up? And why do you want to do that? Are you a competitive? Well, what's your best sport? What's your favorite position and why do you play that? All of these questions is actually digging in. It's not just the yes or no. How are you doing? Fine, fine. But it's actually digging in to get to know the person. I would like to say that, 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 that um, it's a lost art of knowing how to communicate with somebody to actually hear their thoughts and get to know them. And I don't mean it in a bad way, but I think texting has ruined it. 
Because what is texting really about? I want to get my information out to them. And I just sit there and say, but a conversation is, is where you'd actually sit there and say, I care enough about you that I'm going to ask where you've been, what you've been up to, what's been hard, what's been easy. I want to know your story. And so here's the Jesus-like challenge in all of this, in the BB challenge. Well, first thing we do is we PPP, we pray, we pick our fish out of water. And if we got a name on this one, you try the puzzle and you figure it out, but these things actually open up. And so you open this thing up. I tried forever to do it. You got to push on one side of it and then stick your nail in there. But I don't have nails because I just cut them. And then you're able to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to bend my finger back. I'm going to hurt it. Anybody get yours open? Come on. Who's going to be the first? Who's going to be the first? Work it. See that? You're such a competitive guy. Once, got it. Boom. Once you get it open, you pull that little paper out. What I'd like you to do is, Either if you're like afraid that your FOW, your fish out of water, is actually going to see it because you pick somebody, you're going to write their name on here. We're getting personal now. You might want to write a, a symbol for that person or a nickname. Um, or if you think, man, that person's never going to see because I'm in my pocket, you write their name. Then the rest of it, you're not going to write their address. But I want you to more write their life. Ask some questions and write down some interesting things that you found out about that person. What makes them tick? What makes them happy? What makes them sad? What's their favorite food? And what extent would they go to get it? What, what opens their eyes up and, and gets them excited about a day? What brings them down? What's hard? What are their beliefs? What are their friends like? What are they like as a friend? And just to sort of sit there and say, I'm going to try to figure out a couple cool facts about it and be able to have that because this conversation is not about me. It's about me learning about them. I need to know who they are before I'm going to share who he is. Now, the whole time I'm praying for him, and the whole time I'm getting ready and getting excited and praying for the opportunity to share, but I think we need to learn to really care for people, and one of the best ways is to actually figure out who they are. And the best way to do that is as you extend your friendship to be willing to ask some questions that go deeper than, hey, how are you doing? Because if we biblically look at this, what we are sharing is really important. And so I want to kind of look at what we are sharing. Now, I've been doing the same thing over and over again because I'm trying to give you a tool of what we can share. And we're kind of looking at fish tanks. We're kind of looking at a whole different things and all that sort of stuff. Next week, we'll finish the whole what. And so this is what it is. We're going to get to the one part that's a little bit serious on it, right? And so we kind of look at it and we remember that this beginning circle, just like a fish tank, we had God's plan, G-O-D, God's plan. And God's plan was really what he wanted was for us <laughs> to be happy and with him forever. He even said that. I want to be your God. I want you to be my people. And we'll walk, talk, hang out, be together. I'll support you. I'll take care of you. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to make you like my image and we're going to love each other and it's going to be sweet. But he said, just do me one thing. Don't disobey. It's all be good as long as you just don't obey. But what has happened is, is we look at God's perfect plan and we look at how the world is today. The truth of the matter is the world today is not described by God's plan and perfection. It's more described by. <laughs> and we would like to say that it is broken. It's broken, which means everyone is kind of living in brokenness and there's not a whole lot of happiness. How do I know that? Dude, there's all sorts of evidence. I mean, one bit of evidence is this whole COVID thing. It's awful. Not fun. But hate, abuse, gang warfare, wars, child pornography, pornography in general, family problems, sicknesses, a plethora, drugs, addictions. There's all sorts of things that we can look at and point at and say, this world is not functioning right. It is broken. And how did that happen? No, it was God's fault. No, it was not God's fault. It was us through our disobedience choosing to be out. And it's called sin when we decide not to do what God wants to do. Now, what we have as humans have tried to do to say, 
I think we can't be good behavior. I can make myself happy or by uh, drugs or alcohol. I can make myself no money's going to make myself no the best education, a good house, a great car, the perfect girlfriend, the, the, the white picket fence, world travel. We think of all these different things that are going to sort of they're going to bring me out of it. But the truth of the matter is all of these are like rubber bands. They boing us right back into our brokenness. They don't match up. And the truth is, biblically, and this is where it gets a little scary, what we are living, the Bible describes as what's that? You know, God says that he is life. That's not a football buried in the ground. That's my bad doodle of a gravestone. We're describing this thing that's happening. The consequences of our sin is separation from the one thing that brings life God according to the Bible and we are living death I know it sounds weird but that's what that brokenness is and that's what it's all heading for that's why this is so serious if you truly believe this if you truly believe what the Bible says is truth it says for the wages of sin the payment of sin is is this and that is that really happening the brokenness is evidence that this world is not heading in the right direction, but in the wrong direction. Now, what's cool is, is next week we'll bring in the hope part. But this is, this is the good news turned bad news. And then we get to play God's good news once again. And that's why it's called the good news of the gospel. There's a whole other circle that gets painted here that we will talk about. And it gets this cool little symbol. which is my favorite thing to talk about ever. And we'll talk about that next week, about what in the world does that mean, and we'll do it. Now, here's the thing is, is this could be a cool way that you could one day, with your FOW, you've been praying for this person, you've been reaching out with a friendship. In that friendship, you're caring so much that you're asking those questions. You know who they are. You know what brings them happiness. You know what brings them sadness. You know what their spiritual story is or where they got lost or, or where they started hating or what they believe in or what they don't believe in. But you're actually caring about it. They finally turn and say, hey, you know, what's your story? You've heard so much of mine. This might be a way that you could actually sit down and say, hey, I, I just want to draw, draw you a picture that means a whole lot to me. And it might be a tool you could use to make God's story, which he then sucked us into our story and be able to share his truth with somebody. And so that's what we're working on. Any questions so far? Any thoughts? So today's how is by through spending time and questioning somebody to actually find out who they are. Learn their story before sharing his story. Truly care. The what today? Is this brokenness is really serious. It's described in spiritual darkness, spiritual loss, or death. It's not a good place to be. That's why this is so important and we all get it. All right, let me pray for everybody. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for how much you love us. I thank you so much that the story doesn't end with just two circles. And God, I just ask that you would help us to reach out to our friends with caring questions. That everyone wants to be known. And may we reach out and know somebody. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of uh, divide up here. Uh, and so I would like all of the ladies. We'll take the freshman ladies first. Yeah? Freshman and sophomore ladies will go into their room, which is below the attic, right? In that little, yeah. yep. We will have the junior, senior ladies once they're out. You guys take that room right there because it's only 50 degrees in the attic. If you want to go into a very, very cold room, you are more than welcome to go in the attic, but it literally is 53 degrees. 
So junior and senior ladies, head on out. You decide which room you want. You to get this youth room right here or up in the attic, depending on your temperature. <laughs> Freshmen and sophomore boys. You guys know where to go? Go. You guys don't have to be here just listening to all this, but I mean, you can. You can. Thanks. Good to watch. Globemaster Onion. Globemaster Onion. Who are you? Globemaster Onion. Are you there? I'm just going to wait a little bit and let you actually wrote that because I think it's awesome that your name is actually Globe Master Onion. We'd love to know if you're there. You guys, this is your room. So decide how you're going to kind of space out. Not like literally space out. No. Last chance, Globe Master Onion. Going once, going twice. Three times. Yep, see ya. Bye, guys. Praying for you. Have any questions? You can totally email me or text me at either of these numbers. I'd love to figure it out. Bye, Ella. See you guys later. Bye.